Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to show you how to make this exact scene in front of you. As you could see, this is inspired by the art of Josh Pierce, who uses Cinema 4D, so I figured why not show you how to do this using Blender. This is targeted towards beginners, and we'll be talking about a lot of really nice and fun techniques, like making a path that kind of updates whenever you want it to do so. And as always, all of the necessary assets to follow along are linked down below. I am starting with a plane, which I will scale a hundred times, as you could see in front of you. Add a camera very early on, position it where I want it to be positioning, giving it a aspect ratio of 1.5 and a focal length of 22. At this point, I will be adding a path, which will play the role of displacing our mesh in a minute, as you could see. Play around with the path, make it look more like a forest path. And try to think about composition at the same time. Make sure to give it some actual bevel so it has geometry. And make it slightly upward. Add a subdivision to add more geometry to our actual mesh that we'll be using for our round to play around with it a bit and make it look more interesting. You know, just a little bit of uh, proportional editing and a bunch of layered clouds and displacement can take you a very long way. As you could see, I'm just playing around giving it some hills, right? Thinking about how our sketching on the terrain will work. I don't want to see the horizon and we want to be seeing the horizon. So at this point, I will be adding a vertex weight proximity modifier for the simple fact that I want this path to drive our, you know, this is very repetitive, our actual geometry path that we'll be seeing. So as you could see, make sure to choose your nerve and make sure to have the geometry and specifically faces in the settings. So now, as you could see, we have a vertex map to work with, which is uh, dri driven by our nerves path. Play around with the settings right until you have something that would work well now add a displacement modifier and make sure that it has nothing in it so i have chosen none in this case and make sure to choose your vertex group so as you could see we have now the ability to make our indicated vertex group shift downward or upwards as you could see thus giving us the illusion of a path well, as you could see, if I move this, it up. If I move our nerves path, it updates with it directly. At this point, add a Nijd array, whichever one you need. You don't have to be using the exact one that I'm using. You could practically use just a dark bluish background, right? As you could see in front of you, I'm adding another clouds displacement just to give some more details. So, as you could see. I will be using GeoScatcher in this case, as always, right? It's an amazing add on. And for this one specifically, I will be using the Pine Biome, the dynamic Pine Biome, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. As always, link it down below if you want to get this biome pack. It's really nice, it's really light on the device. I wish it was slightly more high resolution or more, uh, has more geometry, right? But it gets the job done and works perfectly well. And you can scatter it on really big areas. So to optimize this more, make sure to have your cam optimization in the visibility area. And in the column masks, choose your vertex group and invert it so we don't have any trees on our actual to on our actual path. Play around with the seed until you get something that you really like, right? And do the exact same for the other five particle systems. Make sure to be using a GPU if you have a GPU. And I like to have denoising on. As you can see, now everything is running very smoothly. We don't have any scatters where we don't really need them. And at this point, I'm using Blender Kit to add a RAM model. It's a sculpture. You might say, what is a sculpture going to help us here? And I would say just wait in a minute, you will understand everything. Delete the bottom part of this, right, as you could see in a minute. And give it an emission 
shader. Because this emission shader a blue color and crank up its strength by a fair bit. So I will be given a texture and importing a model from uh, Megascans Bridge. If you don't have access to that, I will be linking down below a free alternative to these. Adding our actual texture material to our geometry and fixing it since Megascan never gives you good materials inside of Blender at least. So make sure to give it a good UV map. In this case, the texture map is 2 meters and our terrain is 200, so it would make sense to scale it by 100 times. You might probably need to scale it a bit downwards, which is what I'm going to do in a minute. But at this point, we're starting to have a really nice result already. So, we need a bit more details, which is why I'm going to start adding hand-placed foliages from different add-ons. So, the reason I'm not using any of the plants that I have shared around of on my Instagram or on my Facebook or on my Discord, on my Discord a couple of times, is since I want these videos to cover using cost uh, to use uh, publicly available assets so everyone can follow along. I could easily be using my own, right, and usually my own uh, materials tend to work a bit better for me since I already know what I have done there and I know the situations where they should be used. But in this case, Botanic, Max3, any other asset pack will work perfectly fine and give you great results. So I am adding this mesh rock that I have added this embarkment that I have added from bridge and working on its material again. I will be copying the texture from our ground and putting it instead of the texture that came with the actual model and you will understand in a minute as to why. So make sure to fix the material, right? And I want this to blend very well. As you can see, I'm just now fixing again the tiling of our actual ground terrain. And at this point, as you could see, it's integrating really well. I could go ahead and integrate it using a gradient ramp and a, a transparency. However, in this case, it works pretty okay, I would say. Just duplicating these around, right? And at this point, I want to add a volume, as you could see in front of you adding a cube which will play the role of our volume and scaling it right in front of our camera it doesn't matter if it's intersecting with the camera or if the camera is inside the volume however i just like to have this a bit in front since i feel it gives me a bit of a nicer result usually adding some anisotropy giving it a density of 0.01 and we already have something really really nice you could add some emission strength however in this case i really didn't need to since it took away from the very nice contrast one important thing go away to the light paths and give the transparent 128 so we don't have any black halos around our vegetation i wanted to play around with the lighting more which is why i added a spotlight and played around with its color and with its size and radius just to highlight certain parts make sure to not overdo it so we don't lose the quote unquote mysterious look that we are aiming for so at this point it's very important to add some glare now you could do this by adding a glare node and you know go ahead and add in a blur node and play around with this depending on the and making it be driven depending on the uh, dark uh, depending on the more light values however in this case i will be just using the add-on which is called photographer it gives you some very nice uh, it gives you practically the exact nodes that you have in the compositing but it makes them look like a type of preset with sliders to work with so as you can see i'm just playing around with this right experimenting feel free to play around with the tint I like to add some slight greenish tint and make the temperature slightly colder as you can see in front of you and at this point I feel like I want to show you how to add some mist add a cube 
add this cube, give it a principal volume. Add a, a light so you are able to visualize how this is looking like. And add a gradient node. And make sure that it's using the spherical. Play around with the the mapping of the map supply around with the location and scale and make sure that the coordinates is set to generated so we have this type of dot or we have this sort of the sphere add a noise right add a color ramp play around with the color ramp a fair bit and mix these two using a multiply node go ahead and play around with the settings you could make the noise 4d right and just play around with the scale play around with the detail play around with the roughness and stretch this a bit it doesn't look as good now but just wait a minute we'll fix everything up make sure to plug this into the density and have the add a multiply node in order to be able to fine tune this a bit more So as you could see, play around with the color wrap, playing around with the multiply will give you a very nice result. Now it's time to scatter this around. This is actual volumetric, so you can fly through it. You can rotate it multiple times. You can play around with it whichever way you want. If it's not visible, if you don't have enough lighting, you could add the same exact uh, math node into the emission strength and it will be more visible. So you can scatter this around a fair bit, right? It does impact rendering times, but you know, it's fine. In our case, we want this to look type of misty. This is a play around if you don't have access to VRBs or you don't want to use planes or you need some more higher quality type of uh, volumetrics and have more details in general. So feel free to play around with the color space. Feel free to play around with the post process process processing will take this very far. Now it looks the colors look really nice and contrasty and punchy already without anything. And this would be the end of this video. Feel free to subscribe if you think that you enjoy this video. Check out my Instagram or website to see some of my other work. And don't hesitate to ask any questions. Until next time, take care and enjoy yourself.